Hello, my name is Matthew. I'm an application engineer here at Awkward Systems. Geometric Freeform is a powerful modeling software, not only for its ability to convert meshes and CAD bodies into voxel-based clay models, but also due to its sub-D modeling tools. Sub-D modeling allows you to use a push-pull approach to creating a part, which can produce some truly unique shapes. Since the body is made through a projection of these subdivided surfaces, every face seamlessly combines into one another, removing any zero geometry that might occur. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of sub-D modeling and how to transform it into a CAD or voxel body. For starters, I'm going to load in a new sub-D object using my tool palette. This will be placed on the origin, but I can always move it around if needed. We can also adjust the coarseness of the body here or add some symmetry planes too, although this can be adjusted later. After placing the model, I can use the Edit Sub-D tool to begin molding. We can see the cage faces appear around our body that form our object. These faces, as mentioned, are projected into one another, then broken into subdivided surfaces, which gives us our actual shape. As I touch on the different cage faces, I can begin feeling my model with my haptic device, letting me know I'm ready to move that object around. I can also touch on individual vertices or points if I want to add some edges or grooves. While the cage is simplified, I can also add in some symmetry planes if I want. By selecting on a vertex, I can make a mirror that any movements on the cage across that vertex. I can adjust the surface count if I want to make my object smoother or coarser. I can also adjust the number of control points I have using the cage value. We can change these throughout our modeling process to create different features or make movements to the overall size of the body depending on what we need. Now, let's show an imported scan so we can start modeling around it. I'm going to turn this sub-D body into a starter model for a mouse. The hand provides me a scale reference and I can show it through my object list. I can now use that push-pull method to start shaping my mouse. For the bottom of this mouse, I want to have a flat face, but as you can see, I'm pushing on the bottom face and it moves too much. We're going to need to break our cage so our sub-D model at the bottom can move independently without affecting too much of the rest of the body. I can use the Add Loop tool to create a new series of surfaces around our body. The closer I place this loop or edge to the bottom of the cage, the flatter my body becomes towards that area. Now, I can adjust the bottom face without affecting too much beyond the loop, since the sub-D surface needs to smoothly divide it into the adjacent faces only. If we need to break a face into two sections, the Add Edge tool lets you draw the break using two control points. This new edge can be adjusted to add a bend to a face or stopping the entire face from being manipulated when moving in an individual vertice. For this model, I'm going to use this bend to outline where the mouse buttons are by raising one side and adjusting some vertice points on the back end. So far, we've been modeling our part with evenly subdivided movements. If you need to add a sharp extrusion, this doesn't work too well since our cages are trying to evenly subdivide between each face so it moves the surrounding to ensure this happens. Near the pinky though, I want to add an extrusion, but maintain this overall smooth transition through the rest of the model. If I divide my face up more, I can outline where I want my extrusion to be. In the editor, there is an extrude edge or face tool, which adds a whole new section to our subdivided body. This new section has a set of new faces along with it that we can use to adjust the model even further. As we can see, this new extruded area also evenly subdivides back into our main part body. At this point, I'm done modeling my part, and now I want to transform it into another type of body. Sub-D models only work with these sub-D tools, and are neither a mesh or a solid body at this point. Within Freeform is the Auto Surface Tools. This will create a patch of nerve surfaces on our model, conforming to the shape of it. These surfaces are then stitched together to form a complete solid. After running the tool at the default settings, the model will appear blue, meaning that the process has completed. All I have to do now is export this model in the format I desire. In SOLIDWORKS, I can import this part in and see the surface layout and add any kind of prismatic features I want to it. If I want the surfaces to appear smoother, I can always increase the surface count in the sub-D editor before I start running the auto surface tool. I can also convert the sub-D model into a clay voxel, so I can use some of the sculpting or texturing tools within Freeform. By right-clicking on the sub-D model in our object list, I can choose the Copy To and select on the new body type of the model. I can adjust the surface count within here too, as well as the coarseness of the clay voxel. When I'm ready, I can click Add Piece. 
Now I have a clay voxel replicated from the 7D model, and I can begin adding new features. I hope you found this video helpful. Geometrics Freeform is a truly unique modeling software. It can be used to create some pretty organic geometry where only your imagination is the limit. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos on different CAD softwares, 3D scanners, or 3D printers.